What's up, Lou? How we doing? Good, good. I just have to uh, reset the window here. <laughs> you did say it was time to go, right? I, just, yeah, I, I, just, I had the wrong window. That's all. <laughs> um, welcome, everybody, to Wayne's Law Show. We are going to be having Wayne come on shortly. He is just finishing up last minute changes and updates. He has a lot to talk about today. Oh. We do have a guest at five o'clock. Um, and uh, we're gonna have some fun today. Some fun today. We have a oh, guest you, from five o'clock. Was that? That's the radio term. We have a guest schedule for five o'clock. <laughs> That's right. Um, if uh, <laughs> if everything goes well. If everything goes well. Yes. Yes. Um, how are you? I'm very good. <coughs> very good. Beautiful weather up here today. Although it's not cloudy. It's warm. Baseball tomorrow. What the hell more could you want? I'm very excited. Awesome. Yes. We're all. Everybody here is waiting for baseball to start. What's up, Chef? What's up, Sean? Um, go Yankees. Yeah, last year took a hit out of me in terms of my baseball fandom, but I'm ready. I'm back now. I'm completely back. Awesome. My hair is doing something weird. Hello, Wait. Chef. Who's on? Who's on? Chef is on. Chef nice. Right. Rocco. Sean. What's up, man? Rocco. For What's that, Sean Dooley? Sean Dooley is a oh, dude. Sean Dooley is on fire. He's been making, creating some awesome comic book panel memes. Really? Um, yeah, he's uh, he truly is an artist. How come um, I don't see these? I'm not. A, I gotta be. I gotta become friends with Sean, I guess. Uh, yeah, he emails us these uh, these comic book strips. Oh. Um, it's an ongoing thing. It's weekly, right, Sam? It's weekly. Sometimes Every it's, week he has new panels for us. Sometimes it's almost daily. Yeah, nice. yeah. So does uh, he put them up on Facebook? Or does he just email you? Do so I have to get on the email list? Yeah, yeah he emails us directly because there is some. Oh, uh, you know, here or there is some profanity. <laughs> so, oh, okay, great, great. Even more. I want him even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Greg got his second shot today. Congrats, Greg. Congratulations, Greg. Donald's here. Hi, Donald. What's up, Donald? Uh, yeah. So today, guys, we have a great show. Uh, lots to talk about. Not for me, but Layton. We'll have lots to talk about. We are going to give away the fifty-five tops Hank Aaron second year, uh, which we we all we taught everybody. Um, yep. How to enter. So that's going to be later on today. Whenever uh, Lane is ready, he'll just pop oh, up, kick me out. Oh, oh, it's game time, baby. There you go. Now, I would imagine our audience knows what we may talk about with this music we're playing right now. If you don't, have a seat. It's going to be a fun next minute or two when I sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Big time radio team. There it is. All right. Wait, it's on. Here we go, everybody. And I don't know what we're going to be talking about. So I'm much of it, so I'm very excited, too. Hey, what's up, Lou and gang? How are you today? Leighton, what's going on? Not too much. I uh, figured by that very loud intro, you may have figured out by now that we did get back the Michael Jordan rookie Ooh. from the Tupperware collection. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. So we are going to be doing just a minute or two, Lou, a live reveal Ooh. of the grade from the 1986 Fleer basketball Tupperware collection. And folks, if you are curious, you could read the full story about that purchase on our blog at justcollect.com slash blog. Thanks for joining us today on Layton's Loft, our weekly podcast here on the Vintage Breaks and Just Collect uh, Network. You can find us every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, Lou, before we get into, you know, real business here, yes. did you see that Crosby and I finished the Babe Ruth book? I did. I saw the post. It was uh, very exciting. We, we're going to read the – there's like an after, I guess, an after to the reader – Mm -hmm. And, you know, Crosby can only handle so much adult reading or, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's it's a little bit above him, but we still had a great time with it. Um, the last couple chapters between the, you know, um, depicting of the game, what was going on and the home run, all he wanted to know, he told me specifically, as I mentioned last time, Daddy, don't reveal it on your face. And then the last chapter was very much about don't getting you back. Don't face. You have yeah, no that's what he told me. You have no poker face? I thought I did. Apparently, I don't. My <laughs> six-year-old told me I got nothing. Uh, so um, it was really cool um, in regards to 
uh, just the way the story played out because you had kind of like that next to last chapter was about the game. I think it was game four of the World Series. And then the last chapter was that Crosby was very concerned about the ability for the son and the dad to travel back in time. Right. And then just, you know, admittedly, it was a little, you know, it's a little sappy the last chapter, but it was yeah. certainly nice. Um, they did a, they did a good job. What's up, Lucas? I uh, appreciate you tuning in today. What's up, Danny, Ken, the rest? Of, hey, what's up, Chef? Um, uh, so it's just a great way to finish up the book. Um, and uh, he's excited to read the next one. So I wanted to share it with everyone on uh, on Facebook. Uh, we're, we're real uh, pumped about it. And Crosby's proud that he read such a big book. He's written a ton of books. I went looking today because I went to look what the rest of the baseball series was right. This series is based around a kid who can time travel with baseball cards. And they all go back to a particular card. And that era of history, there's a lot of history involved. It's a good series. But I went back and he's written a lot of other books otherwise. And then I fell into this. I didn't look for it. You know what Dan Gutman's net worth is right now? No. $4 million. What? Right, right, in, these, right in these kids' books. Wow. But to be honest, he's written a freaking ton of them. And they're not small books. They're not little books. Those, are, those have some heft to them. They're not 300 pages. But they're not... Quick one, quick hitters either. So, like, God bless him. He's out working hard. He's written a crap load of books. Oh, you know what? I can't wait to tell because Crosby's recently got into money. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the sense of, hey, what am I getting for my tooth? What am I getting for this? Put it in my piggy bank. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, I like when he can connect that you can do something that's fun with money as yep. opposed to, hey, what's up, Jim? Um, as opposed to, like, hey, you just have to get a job and earn money because that's what you're supposed to do. Yep. Uh, so I'm hoping he catches on to that. We'll see. I don't know if writing is the way to go, but okay. Hey, well, apparently for Dan Govan it for is. Dan, it's good. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know how Dan has any other kind of life considering how many books he's written. But Very and true. You're gonna, and you're going to do Jackie Robinson next, right? Honus Wagner was the first one. I think we're going to do Jackie next only because he yeah. you know, started learning about you know like Black History Month in school. Right. I think they try to teach him about Martin Luther King a little bit. And so I just, I feel like it, it has a lot of relevance to, you know, what's going on for him as a six-year-old in learning in school. Idea. What's up, Nick? Um, so uh, also today for announcements, what's up, Cuff Daddy? Um, now, Emily, have we cut off the uh, the um, entries for this, Hank Aaron? Yes. Okay. So we're going to do the drawing, what, the end of the loft today? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Great. So, Lou, some... Whether it be it could be a son or daughter of the vintage race community, it could be a niece or nephew, a cousin, but someone today is going to win an unbelievable either start, foundation, or enhancement to a children's baseball card collection. Yeah. I can assure you that I did not have anything this valuable as a young pup. Yeah, I was gonna say. In my collection. All right, yeah. All right. So top of the hour today, give everyone an idea of what's going on with the show. Uh, we have a special guest. It's going to be opening up a special pack of cards with us at the top of the hour. Um, the end of the show today or towards the end, we will reveal the winner live of the uh, Vintage Breaks Kids uh, promo where someone's going to go home with that 1955 Tops Hank Aaron SGC 4.5. <laughs> Ted, I don't think Disney's going to let you get away with that. What was Chef saying? He's always filled uh, with... going to sell virtual moments of Disney characters. I think Disney might have something. They might say. have an issue. Yeah, might have an issue. They might have an issue. Uh, of course, we'll be talking about, you know, grading what's going on with PSA's announcement, but I did want to have a few other uh, fun announcements uh, before we get started with, you know, some real business here. Um, this is now sold out. 1967 Tops Baseball Rack Pack is being opened tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Even if you're not in it and you don't have a spot, let me tell you, this is must-see breaking TV. Tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern on the Vintage Breaks Network. Nice. I think you could sell a virtual moment of, of you hitting the 54 mantle. 55 mantle. 55. Oh, yeah, especially 55. if you numbered them and there was only 10 of them. Yep. Where's Chris Coe? He can market it by the end of the show. He'll have something going. Get that going. Sell these things. Absolutely. What's going on, Brett? All right. So without further ado, we are going to reveal. Now, what's the best way to do this, Lou and J5? Switch to the eye. Right? Yeah, I think that's All right. Just exactly. Do you want me to show the kids? 
Yeah, if you could show the other view, please. Yeah, let me just make sure. These are the kids. Oh, this is adorable. Oh my goodness, I haven't seen this yet. This is really cute. How many total people enter J5? Oh, yes. Now, we don't have 26 pictures up here because we want to obviously get everyone's permission. So we only got a handful of people, you know, in time permission to show their pictures. This right. is really adorable. I'm going to definitely show uh, Jules this later on. <laughs> Good job, whoever put this together. <laughs> we just ended Lou. Lou, really nice job. Yeah, it's great. It's always great to see the kids, isn't it? Yeah, it's really cute. Uh, you know, I'd love to... Uh, See the reaction of whoever wins. Uh, you know, I don't know if they understand the, the gravity of the card, the importance of Hank Aaron as a person and as a player. And then, of course, just the simple dollars and cents of it, which Crosby, I'll tell you, he'd understand. Yeah. Daddy, how much is that worth? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So that'll be coming up towards the end of the hour. Uh, we're going to be uh, revealing. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, want to put this up? Okay, so what we have in front of me is the 1986 Fleer Michael Jordan rookie, recently back from grading with PSA, took a trip out, trip out to California, so the weather was great. Uh, it is finally now back here in our possession at the 459, and uh, really appreciate uh, the opportunity to buy, uh, you know, such an amazing collection. Um, and I, I just realized, well, actually, to be fair, I didn't go to my parents' house. I went to my sister's house uh, recently. Um, but next time I go to my parents' house, I promise you I'm going to be taking pictures of my mom's famed Tupperware collection. Um, and my guess is it's still intact because I have no reason to think she disposed of it uh, unless my father, you know, decided uh, he had something over on my mom. Yeah. And the way he was going to cash it in was to get rid of the Tupperware collection. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, so, oh, that's cool, Jim. Try the book, The Goof That Won the Pendant, a Little League version of the Fred Merkel bonehead play. That's kind of neat. Yep. Haven't heard of that one. Yeah, Jim, if you could text me or message me, that'd be awesome. All right, so Lou, we're going to do a live reveal. We'll put it just like this so that people know it's the Michael Jordan rookie card. This is the Michael Jordan rookie that we recently purchased out of, um, or it was as part of the 1986 Fleer uh, basketball Tupperware collection. For those of you that do not know, uh, this collection was preserved uh, basically since 1986. Uh, by the family um, in mom's Tupperware. Uh, and to be fair, you know, they knew at some point the Michael Jordan rookie had value, so they they, they put them in sleeves and such. Um, but nonetheless, we're still stored in the Tupperware in the safety deposit box. And today, live on the Layton's Loft uh, podcast, our weekly show, you can find us here every Wednesday at 4.30. Um, and you have a chance to win one of seven prizes. We'll go into that in just a few minutes today. Uh, but we have a very special reveal of the Michael Jordan rookie grade right here. All right. So we should have had the music going, J5. I know, right? It's all good. <laughs> and the Spencer. Michael Jordan rookie graded with PSA came back a nine. Ooh. Unbelievable. Wow. Look at that beauty. See, what we need now is a Tupperware sponsorship. You know, Lou, that would have been great. Yeah. For today and very apropos marketing Tupperware preserve this nine of Michael Jordan rookie. look what it could do for your food and cards that's right I'll have Monty on that he's he, he likes to try to uh you know get some uh sponsors out there I wasn't sure if you were watching Jason up oh, Ken guest Ken said a nine so Jason and his father were kind enough to drive down from Virginia uh and entrust us to not only evaluate the collection, but give us a chance to buy it. Um, and as we had discussed originally, uh, we went over the grades. You know, we didn't know exactly what was going to grade, but I did tell him that I would be happy to keep Jason posted. Uh, and um, Jason was actually the only one who knew before today's show, because uh, I, I wanted him to know, uh, you know, the, the moment that I found out. But I'll tell you, even though I knew the grade when it was on its way back from PSA, yep. I was still very anxious waiting for the package. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. 
So yeah, great quick. job to uh, Jason, his mom's Tupperware. Have you ever done a conditional sale, condition on, conditional on what the grade of the card turns out to be? We have on occasion through the years. Um, and don't forget, folks, this is an unbelievable relic from 1967, a 1967 Tops baseball rack pack that we're going to be opening tomorrow night from the Mickey Mantle series. Nice. 8 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, J5, I just realized we didn't go over uh, the new event as such. Oh, so Jason's here. Yeah, no, it was, it, it was great. Yep, Jason's here. He just made it just That's part of the reason why I slow rolled it, because I didn't see Jason's name yet, and I thought he was going to tune in. I told him late last week that I would be revealing it today, so I was really glad that he was able to see it. Uh, so, G5, we'll have to go over that at the end of the, uh, the show. Um, great. So, uh, today, what I want to cover before we have – um, Joe on at five, like that. Yeah, Lou's gonna take it. Great. Is the big announcement by PSA yesterday uh, in regards to grading? Oh, okay. I didn't hear it. Good. Uh, yes. So uh, before we reveal that, um, let's go over the prizes for today. So Dougie, we're gonna keep it simple. First place is going to get a fifty dollars break credit, courtesy of VintageBreaks.com. And the other six prizes will be a spot in the 1973 Tops baseball set break. And the only way to earn one of those seven prizes or have a chance to win one of those seven prizes is through your participation right here on Layton's Loft, our weekly podcast. All you have to do is drop a little hello or what you've bought in the last week on our Facebook page. And Mr. Dougie Fresh will get you into our promotion. Uh, if you share a watch party and help us get the word out about our show, you will get a second entry into that promotion. Um, so yesterday, uh, Lou... We're going to have to switch that up soon. You're, you, have you heard that? Facebook is getting rid of the watch party. Really? They are? Yeah, so we're going to have to go to shares to share the program. Interesting. Yeah. They're getting rid of it completely? Yes. Fa uh, it's going away. I want to say April 16th. That's the uh, date in my head, but I'm not sure exactly what it is. Yep, probably because they figured out they're not taxing it or they're not making money from it. <laughs> Entirely possible. That's, that's yeah. my take on it. Yep. What's up, Rocco, Sean, Donald, and Ben? Steven, thanks for joining us today, of course, on Layton's Loft. So the big news yesterday from PSA was that they're cutting off all services Ooh. until July 1st that are under Super Express. So in other words, bulk, regular, economy, express, any of those um, – you know, less expensive services are no longer available moving forward. So they can, until July, temporarily, so they can catch up with the millions of cards that they have in-house to grade currently. And, um, you know, a number of people in our industry who make content, um, you know, from YouTubers to Instagrammers to, you know, Facebookers, Facebook groups, everyone's talking about it. Everyone has an opinion on it. Um, certainly, as a collector, it affects you one way. As a dealer, it can affect you another way. As an investor, it potentially could affect you a certain way. Um, some of the ways overlap between those groups. Others are completely separate from each other. Um, and I wanted to talk about today, um, you know, my opinion as to, uh, you know, what they uh, rolled out uh, within the last 24 hours, um, how that's going to impact me, as someone who does this for a living, um, and then also field some questions, uh, just because I, I feel it, it's it's so important um, to uh, you know to the hobby, Lou, as to your ability to get your cards graded. So people might ask, hey, you know, should I get my cards graded with Beckett or SGC or should I wait? Yeah. So um, be happy to take some questions today, Lou. In just a few minutes, if you can uh, help out with that. That'd be great. Sure. Um, so, folks, you know, super high level. Um, I know folks uh, and customers, collectors, dealers, uh, their first gut is like that shock and, you know, almost like whether it be anger or upset, a little bit of feeling of being left out, you know, without a plan, right? I have all these ungraded cards. What am I supposed to do? PSA was my place. Right. I have stuff on the registry. And, you know, just understand um, at the very least that, you know, for, for, from their standpoint, they didn't really know what to do. And I knew that this kind of thing was going to be coming down the pike 
because when I kept hearing about additional space being secured by PSA to simply store their cards and not grade them, not like, oh, we wow. now have 45,000 more square feet because we're setting up a training center like we've not, talked about in here. Yeah, or not your college. Space. Like not you don't hear about that. You don't hear about – I'm not suggesting, by the way, that that's not coming. That's not what I'm saying. But the, the recent news in the last 30, 60, 90 days has been about space and they're trying to hire. So when I figured when they're trying to hire and they're simply getting more space and they're crushing the local post office and, the, and they basically are breaking you know, all the different parts of the ecosystem, there is no doubt in my mind that this was going to happen. It just happened sooner than I thought. I thought it was going to happen after the national. Yeah. Um, but my feeling on it, uh, as much as it definitely affects me, excuse me, as a businessman, as an entrepreneur, as someone who grades cards for profit, you know, beyond just for, you know, for fun uh, and to, you know, enjoy the hobby, um, you absolutely are going to have to, uh, you know, change the way that you're doing things. And at the same time, depending on where you are in your space, meaning as a collector, dealer, investor, et cetera, you might not have to, you might just not, if you bought and sold, let's say ungraded, graded and wax, maybe you're not going to, you know, buy ungraded right now, but you know, the industry is not going to stop. It's going to continue moving forward. Um, I really think that, uh, I agree with you, John, uh, SGC caught a lot of flack over the last few months about having their own problems, their own shutdown. And granted, SGC is not nearly the size of PSA, but you know, something, there's something to be said for the decision that SGC reached months ago to basically cut off submissions slash do something similar to PSA did where they didn't really cut them off, but you could only submit maybe super duper expensive stuff. Right. Um, and the reality of it is for me, as someone who's using PSA in all those different buckets, meaning as a collector, uh, dealer, investor, um, I prefer this um, as opposed to the continued slow bleeding and the slow death, because I'm hoping that whenever they start up again with these different services, whether it be in a week, a month, three months, whatever the case may be, um, Lou, that they're going to just be a lot more accurate about the turnaround times. Yeah. Um, hopefully pricing uh, at the very least won't continue to go up. Maybe we'll be stabilized and maybe we'll get lucky and it'll go down. Um, but in regards to, uh, you know, did I, did I think it was necessary? I think so. I think PSA, you know, especially now, they were taken over by Nat and his group. Um, they're a real smart uh, group of folks. And you could just, I'm sure, plot out how many cards they had, how many people they had under the roof that could grade the cards. And it was not looking very promising as to the ETA when the, all the cards would be done. Right. So I just think that they made a difficult decision, but at least they did it before the national, which, by the way, I'm not convinced is happening. We'll talk about that in a minute um, because we just got an email today from a different Chicago show, not the national, but a different Chicago show called like the Chicago Spectacular. It's supposed to take place in June. I forwarded it to a few of my buddies in the industry and they canceled the show and they cited it um, basically say, stating that the state of Illinois is still yeah. in stage four. And in order to have a convention of that size, they need to be at least in stage five. And so their next convention's in November. They're hoping that by the end of the summer, Things will be, you know, and this is what the email said. So I'm just, you know, right. summarizing. Um, but I forward that to a few folks. And I talked to someone earlier today that said that they thought the chance of the national is 50-50. I sent them that. And they said that in their own mind, it lowered the chances to like 20% that there'll be a national, 80% that there won't. Um, I don't know. I'm just sharing the information with you, you know, as I have it. But um, even more of a reason to kind of, you know, bring it back to center and talk about PSA. Um, I think PSA made a difficult decision, but I do think they made the right one. Because I'd rather have them catch up, candidly, self-serving. I had thousands of cards there. I know plenty of people that have more, that have less. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, if they're not able to catch up, I'd rather have them catch up and then understand moving forward, what's the pricing going to be? What's the turnaround going to be? And at least it won't be a problem in perpetuity. Um, it'll just be a problem for now. And hopefully they'll catch up over the next few months. All right, let me ask you this, because my mind is going from an investment standpoint, is this going to suppress a little bit the fueling of the prices that we've seen in the industry lately? And so does that present a buying opportunity? Because people are probably not going to sell for a little bit because they'd probably prefer to sell their cards graded, wouldn't they? Well, I tell you, Lou, it depends on the, the, 
the situation you find yourself in. So if you're someone who's in the hobby and you have a bunch of cards that you were going to have graded, my guess is you probably will not do much different other than potentially explore other grading companies. But I don't think you're necessarily going to just sell them as is. Right. Um, however, for the folks that have, you know, real vintage collections like 50s and 60s and 70s and things of that nature, um, it is going to be difficult to figure out what to do because the price it's going to cost to grade a card now is going to be so exorbitant, you're not going to be able to grade a lot of the cards that you would have graded before. And so if you're not willing to wait for those, you know, floodgates to open and the ability to submit cards that you need to for your collection, um, my guess is we may see a little bit more of that sold kind of as is in the marketplace um, than we have before. Um, but I know from my standpoint, just as a, as a business owner, like you're going to need capital. So in other words, for me to sit with 500 units, a few thousand cards and not grade them a PSA, right. God bless you. Um, for the next, let's say, few months to six months, whatever the case may be, I'm going to be able to uh, sit on them, yes, but if they're not being sold, that means that I have to not basically have money come in for them. And you need to have some bankroll. Right. So there is going to be some planning you know, needed, uh, whether it be you are a collector, dealer, investor. Um, and to be fair, right, I'm already looking at, you know, not just SGC, but, you know, Beckett and CSG, you know, about all the different options and, you know, figuring out, uh, you know, am I going to take a plunge and grade some bulk cards with those companies or just wait a little bit, you know, who knows. Um, but I do think that uh, it's worth discussing, Lou, as we have a few minutes here before Joe joins us, the different buckets that are going to be affected in terms of uh, pricing. So for example, already graded cards, mm -hmm. right? Wax and then ungraded cards are the three buckets, the three groups that come to mind that people talk about. Well, the, the current, the, the PSA news that they just shared, Lou, is that going to impact prices? It's a boon for uh, people who already have the cards graded, isn't it? Because the pr that price increase is going to be built in. The Absolutely. Be built in. So, yeah. So, first and foremost, as far as graded cards, especially on the lower end of graded cards, when you used to be able to go, let's say, on eBay and buy you know, a nice amount of graded cards for like 5 to 20 bucks, I can tell you firsthand that uh, that availability has been shrinking. And my guess is, Lou, it will continue to shrink, meaning there'll be a less available at that price level right. because you can't grade it with PSA for that. I'm not saying they're worth it. That's not what I'm saying. Right. It's just that PSA is charging way, way more than you can buy the graded card for. People are going to gravitate towards the graded card. Um, number two for wax, this is very interesting. I feel like there's definitely going to be um, a difference between you know, modern wax and like the, the real new stuff yeah. and then vintage wax, let's just say from 80s and earlier, because if you take, for example, um, uh, just, uh, you know, modern wax, if you can't grade a LaMelo ball rookie for anything reasonable with PSA, no, people are going to grade with BGS. They're going to grade with SGC. Maybe it'll go for similar money. Maybe it, it will it will go for more than you think because PSA is not grading them right now. Right. Um, but there's there's those out there that think, Lou, that wax prices on the modern stuff are going to be affected because part of what was really fueling prices of modern wax was the ability to get the cards graded and sell them for big premiums. Right. Now, you could still grade with Beckett. You could still grade with um, SGC and CSG, you know, one of the new upcomers. Um, but I, I just think that um, if the product is really strong, It'll maintain uh, its value pretty well. But for those products that are a little bit cheaper, Lou, where, you know, I'll call them like you were getting these base rookies in abundance out of a box. You would grade them for six, eight or 10 bucks and you turn that into a 50 or $100 bill. Yeah. I think those types of wax boxes will be affected because you can't you can no longer take those cheap, you know, inexpensive base rookies that you're pulling and grade them for such a cheap, inconsequential amount of money. Right. Uh, David has a question. He says, Leighton, could the market sustain sustain multiple grading services? Does it have to be PSA? It's mostly a brand. Is it a mostly branding issue there with PSA being the most recognizable brand? Um, so the market can absolutely sustain multiple grading services. However, you know, I'll compare it, I guess, to, you know, almost breakers. Like there are a lot of different breakers, 
But then there's only a few breakers that have a really great community. And of course, I'm plugging ourselves here with Vintage Breaks, you know, right behind us. <laughs> but, you know, like all kidding aside, there's only so many breakers that give away stuff every month, have a marketing budget, don't do it out of their mom's garage. And not to say that any of those are wrong, it's just different. So the market can absolutely sustain multiple grading services, but this is how I was connecting the two, David. So if you have a grading company and you can grade the cards, that's fantastic, but that's not... That's only one aspect of a grading company. If you have no marketing budget, so for example, for SGC, and Dave Foreman's a personal friend of mine, but if SGC had a much more active registry, set registry, or yeah. player registry, well, their prices would be higher in the secondary market. If Beckett had a set registry and a big marketing budget for their cards, then they would achieve higher secondary market prices. Um, but I do think the market could sustain multiple grading services because just look at the amount of cards that are that are in sheer volume at PSA waiting to be graded. Yeah. You know, there's millions of cards. So um, I believe that just like in any other business, simple supply and demand dictates what these cards sell for. So right now you can have a card in a Beckett or an STC holder, same grade as PSA, but you buy it for a little bit less because PSA has the recognized brand name. But I, I think you can work on that, but everything takes time. Now's your time with PSA not grading cards. Yeah, but it, as you said, it's going to take that ramp up of auxiliary services that PSA has built uh, to get on that level. Yes, exactly. It's not just about grading cards, Lou. You need to have a registry. You need to have a community. Um, you know, you need more. You need more than just the ability to grade cards. Um, does anyone have any other questions before we uh, have on today's guest? Joseph? Dom asked, is PSA autograph services being affected? Great question, Dom. I do not know yet, but as soon as I find out, I'll let the community know. All right. That's it for questions immediately. Great. So we'll uh, we'll come back to a few questions after we have uh, Joe Kobez um, open up his 1981 Topps basketball pack and tell us a little bit about himself. Hi, Joe. Hey, how's it going? Hey, Thank Joe. You. How are you today? I'm, I'm well. Thanks for having me on. Oh, listen, it's our pleasure. Um, so, Joe, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, tell everyone where you're from and you know, a little bit about your background and where you're, you know, uh, like basically what your collecting uh, interests are. Oh, wow. Uh, so I'm originally from Washington State. Uh, I grew up there on Fort Lewis. My uh, whole family's military. And so from there, I went to military, military school, military college, joined the military. So I think you're getting the trend, right? Military. Yeah. <laughs> so, what branch, Joe? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm sorry. What branch, Joe? I was in the army. Yeah, right. arm army counts. Uh, we we accept the Marines too. Absolutely counts. Yes. It sure does. Yeah. Yeah. We we can debate the Air Force and the Navy, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what what about the Coast Guard? <laughs> uh, the what? I'm just kidding. <laughs> now we like to give each other a hard time back here in the states, but when we're deployed, we're all on the same team. Yeah. So. Um, so yeah, so I, I did, uh, 20 years. Um, I was medically retired, uh, just due to so many, so many years over state uh, overseas and so many injuries. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I was awarded a, a purple heart and a, a few bronze stars. And so I, I served, uh, over three and a half years in Iraq. Um, I've been to almost every state, been to a bunch of different countries, um, so that's kind of that. I have a beautiful wife and four kids. All the pictures behind me oh, go this way. There's, uh, if you can see it, two two of my kids in the center middle and two more, two more in the top middle. So that's why I sat here. I'm, I'm very proud of my family. So um, they've been with me all over the country and uh, through a bunch of deployments and, and whatnot. So we're in Phoenix now. We moved. Our, our last stop was New York and we moved to Phoenix. My wife um, was, she's from here originally. And then we met, you'll never believe this. So I'm not, I, I don't really look like a Jimmy Buffett fan. I don't know if you get that from looking at me, <laughs> <laughs> but I know I don't, you know, parrot head and everything, yeah. but I came back, I came back from Iraq my first time and came to see family just all over the country, went to Phoenix and Illinois and Washington State and just, you know, all over the place. And I stopped in Phoenix to see one of my relatives and just say, hey, I'm still alive. And then uh, I, I stopped here and, and my brother was like, hey, I got an extra ticket. Go to Jimmy Buffett 
concert with me. I need somebody to drive. I'm like, I'm not going around 10,000 people. He's like, no, 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 just, just drive. And you can, you can just drive us. And I'm like, okay. So they went to the concert. I hung out in the parking lot, just away from all the people. Sure enough, she's a parrot head. And so, <laughs> and so they all went into the concert and when, when they were coming out, we were ready to go. But one of my brother's friends passed out in the concert. So we had to wait for the whole thing to empty. Sure enough, she was one of the last ones out. And I met her there at the Jimmy Buffett concert. And so, oh, wow. That's cool. Yeah, it's a really interesting story. So, uh, so that's how we met. So what's your song? The two of you, what's your song? Um, you know, we have a bunch of them. But uh, at, at our wedding, we danced to a Tim McGraw song, My Best Friend. Yep. Um, we're kind of more, we're all over the place. We have, you know, uh, we listen to everything. Yep. We listen to, yeah. Um, it, it's hard to think right now of it because we're we're all over the place. But we like Margaritaville too. Hey, we have to. We're island we're island type people. But yeah. Well, Joe, thank you uh, for your service. Uh, very proud to have you here today. As I mentioned, I think corresponding uh, with your lovely wife through email, um, I had mentioned that my sister's husband is in the military. Uh, he serves proudly in the Army. He's actually in uh, the state of Washington, probably similar uh, area to where you were living, um, I would imagine. And, you know, we've talked about for quite some time, Joe, uh, not just Tim joining us, but someone like yourself, Joe, uh, someone meaning who served our country proudly. Um, and uh, I just feel that, you know, I'm thinking, I'm sitting here thinking like, wow, I've been really grateful uh, for this journey that we've had and thankful for like we've had some incredible athletes, you know, Warren Moon and Emmett Smith and Dale Murphy and, you know, Pete Rose and what have you. But, you know, the reality of it is, yes, does it take courage to play a game and to, to fail and then pick yourself back up and try again to succeed? Yes. Um, but I would argue that uh, you might just be the biggest hero that we've ever had on here. Uh, <laughs> so we appreciate you joining us today. Um, and uh, Appreciate that. It's uh, hopefully going to be the driver from for a Jimmy Buffett concert. That's a hero. It's uh, <laughs> it's hopefully going to be the first of several appearances this year um, from folks who have either currently serving our country proudly or have served our country in the past proudly. Um, and so, Joe, you are our first. Uh, and even though we are not related by family or blood, um, I do feel like we are family in the sense that uh, you know you are out uh, fighting for us and. Candidly, I know what we do here at Vintage Breaks and Just Collect is certainly, um, you know, just about entertainment and baseball cards. Uh, and so, you know, just very, uh, very happy that you're able to join us uh, today and very humbled. Uh, and so it's at, at the very least, we uh, sent you um, some cool stuff. But there's one thing in particular that we wanted to have you kind of share the experience with our community today, because whether or not you're a basketball fan or not, you know, 1981 Topps basketball is very hot right now. And the Bird Magic card, seeing as how it's their first card by themselves, is super duper hot. We've had really good luck here. And it's funny because when we first concocted this whole idea of having you on, Joe, we originally thought we were going to send you a care package and we'd open the pack from here. But then we realized, like, it's so much better in your hands. Uh, <laughs> and it makes the experience a lot more enjoyable, I think, for everyone. Um and so, you know, once again, thank you for, you know, being with us today and taking the time. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're comfortable with it, we'd like to see you watching your 1981 Topps basketball pack that you have there and have you open it with us on camera. Well, thank you for your kind words. I appreciate it. And, and you know, I've been, I've been a part of Vintage Breaks for quite some time now, and I enjoy watching it. Um, and so thank you for having me on this podcast. I really do. Um, and yeah, you, so you sent this and, and a bunch of other things. And I really appreciate that. That was really, really nice. This has been hard to hold on to because I don't know how you are. But, but when I get a pack of cards, it shows up in the mail or I go and buy it. And I'll either, if I go to a store and buy it, I open it in the truck. And it's really hard to make sure I don't bend it or whatever. I'm very careful <laughs> with it. And I'll hand it to my wife and say, here, hold on to this, you know, for the drive home after I open it, of course. And I've had to hold on to this for multiple days now. <laughs> so, Joe, you're an army guy. You're supposed to have more discipline than that. <laughs> not when it comes to this. Yeah. <laughs> there hey, are listen, things... we, all, we all need a release. This is simply just, you know, Joe's break and release. <laughs> um, and it's funny because your wife basically alluded to that through email. And certainly we're not trying to out you. But she said, 
hey, I got to kind of keep this package away from him because if I don't, you're going to have nothing to show for next Wednesday. That's exactly right. That's what so, she did. There, there are two things. Smart where, lady. Yes, she, she, she knows me. And in some things, I'm like a grown man. But when it comes to baseball cards and some comics, I, I might as well be an eight to ten year old kid. So yeah, no, I feel coming to work every day, Joe. Very thankful. For in other words, you're male like the rest of us. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy to open it. Yeah. It's taking great. Well, let's see what we got, Joe. And um, we'll share the experience with uh, the audience. And we're hoping that you get a magic or a bird or a McHale rookie. You know, we'll see what we can find. Rocco, yeah. wants to know what region this pack is from. You have any idea, Leighton? No, I don't know what region, um, but I know that we've had some really good luck, Dougie Fresh, right? With our 81 basketball. Yeah. So we got, I mean, and yeah, Dr. J. Oh, uh, look, Joe, by the way, You've already passed the test. You could literally break for us any time. I love that you have card savers right there. I'm ready. Oh, yeah. Yeah, ready. yeah you're ready. I mean, I shouldn't expect anything different from someone who's military, but, you know, I don't like to assume. <laughs> I, I, I was going to have my mouse pad, too, but I was like, you know what? This is this is clean enough. I That's was, great. All right. I've good seen luck, you guys many times. I know what to do. All right. Good. Good. <laughs> yeah. And no matter what anyone says in the chat, you don't have to eat the gum. <laughs> <laughs> don't fall for that we've had too yeah, many yeah. people fall for that yeah please gum do not be on a on a larry bird or uh. okay good it came off clean all right here we go all right fingers crossed fingers and toes i'm gonna put them there oh i love this this is like true vb style Look oh i've watched i've watched it too long this is great. All right, let's see here. Who we got? There's, oh, first one. There we go. Randy Smith. Randy Smith. All right. And let's let's pop this sucker. I, I'm nervous, man. I am. I'm like shaking. I'm trying to do this the right way. No, you know, it's funny. We've had on several of our, like, you know, Breaking Maniacs, people part of our community uh, over the last couple of years. And I always get a text uh, fairly soon afterwards, Joe. Yeah. You're like, late, you know. Like, that's impressive what you do. And, like, I'm, like, literally, I'm, like, you mean putting cards in holders? They're, like, no, <laughs> putting cards in holders, talking, telling a story about, you know, from eighth grade, talking right. about Swedish fish, and you also know the price of a 1989 upper deck ripping a nine. That's right. You, so, that's exactly right. You have to keep keep the entertainment, know the knowledge, be able to do this, not shake at the same time, answer the questions, see what's coming. Yeah, well, that's why we got Lou in the loft here. So yeah. That's right. What I'm focusing on is not bending it. And putting it in there right now. That's Excellent. it. That's come on, Mike. Give him a break. He, he doesn't need any numbers. It's all for him. <laughs> what do we got here? Oh, there we go. Darwin Cook. I got excited because yeah. I saw the pink. I thought maybe for magic. Well, that would have been nice. Yeah. Would have had to send that one in with uh, PSA Super Express. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> now, Joe, out of curiosity, what's like you know what you're really you know your not necessarily value. What's one of your most favorite cards in your collection? Uh, uh, Michael Jordan. Uh, rookie card? Yeah. Very cool. I've got 8.5. 8 that's very nice. That's nice. Nice. So there we go. Oh, I saw a Celtic. Got excited. <laughs> so did I. Is that and Tiny saw, Archibald? That is. Nate, yes. Nate Archibald? Nate. Yep. In action. That's a nice pull. Hall of Famer. That one's good. Yep. Oh, don't flip. Don't flip. That 8.5 will buy some margaritas. There's no no doubt about that. That's that's um that's good. Yeah, that's that's a decent <laughs> one. And it's it's recently the price has just escalated. I mean, yes. just I mean, in the last six months, year, it's amazing. Who is that? Foots Walker. Foots? Interesting name. Yeah, I was just as I looked at it, I was wondering his mom named him Foots. <laughs> yeah. Is that what it says? It says Foots Walker. I'm not kidding. That's great. That's so strange. I've never heard somebody named Foots. And his last name is Walker, not for nothing. <laughs> I didn't even put that together. <laughs> no, I didn't either. His mom was no dope. <laughs> no. Foots. <laughs> uh, Kevin Porter. There we go. Super. I love that bullets uniform back in the I day. I like those bullets uniforms, yeah. Now, Joe, do you happen to have any card shops like in your general vicinity out in Arizona? Um, you know, there there's one close that never seems to have too much, 
And then there's one about a half hour drive to the east. And yeah, nice guy. He does breaks locally. Um, I haven't been a part of those. I stick with you guys for my breaks, but he always tries to get me involved. <laughs> sell, sell, sell. But um, when it comes to, say, getting uh, more recent stuff, 2020, Bowman Chrome, that kind of stuff, I can get them from there That's instead cool. of picking them up on eBay or something sure. like that. So it's nice to have a local card store. It really is. Yeah. I mean, he's a nice guy. Michael Ray Richardson. I remember Michael Ray. Yep. Old Knicks uniform. But, the, you know, the honestly, the only thing really that's decent to, to get out of the store is, is you know, new release. This sure. last year, 2020. This year, 2021. Anything for, you know, uh, um, older cards is your guys' is, your guys' is breaks um, for the uh, series or uh, whatever you call it, the um, the hits um, or um, – yeah, what's the word where you guys have a Mickey Mantle like, rare, like a hit random? Yeah, like a set break or a hit random? Yeah. yeah, or where if you if we um, buy enough and for every thousand you end up getting oh, like a bonus. Yes, the bonus, and then yep. sometimes you'll have a sometimes you'll have a, a Mickey Mantle rookie card fifty two that comes around very rarely. Yeah, but I love I love that. Kenny says Foot's real first name is Clarence. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Kenny. Oh, we all needed that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Washington Bullets. There we go. Individual stats. Are any of your kids into collecting yet? You know, um, it's kind of forced upon them. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm glad that you're so honest. I appreciate it. <laughs> that, that, other than Leighton facing the, uh, forcing the Jets on his kids. So. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not, I, gotta be, I gotta be careful of that. <laughs> we moved. We moved from New York, and so we we aren't we aren't Giants fans, though. No, not at all. So <laughs> e Eli Manning took care of that. <laughs> Just kidding. I hope he's. I hope he doesn't watch. I hope he's not a fan. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Scratch that off of this. Just bleep that. Yeah, out. we'll just we'll just bleep it out. Yeah, he's a nice guy. Uh, Michael Thompson. Michael Thompson. Sorry, my camera. I guess a little blurry. It's all good. So I think that our very own Sir Charles G uh, is not that far from you in Arizona. You know, he breaks on Wednesday night. So he breaks tonight starting at, I guess, 930 Eastern, Sam. And and is he in Phoenix, Charles? Mesa. Mesa. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's straight out east. So what uh, is that from you? Like an hour, half hour, a little bit further? About a half hour. About oh, half not hour. bad. Yeah. Maybe if uh, you're ever bored and you want to do a guest appearance, you know, live with Charles after this whole COVID <laughs> thing, we could have sure. you guys meet up on a Wednesday night. That'd be great. Yeah. Very cool. If you recommend him, then yeah. Yes, we do. <laughs> All right. Who we got here? Walter Davis. Oh, he's a Hall of Famer. Nicely centered, too. Yeah, that is a good one. Walter Let Davis is a Hall of Famer? I believe so. Yep. It's the NBA late, and you could tell me anything. <laughs> you know, I'm Lou, I know I could just tell you, you'll just believe it because you don't know, but I'm actually looking it up now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Artist Gilmore. Oh, that's Artist is definitely a Hall of Famer. And those chops are definitely Hall of that Famer. Is, that is, that is. Which, by the way, my chops, even though they're under construction right now, I got a haircut today, but I, I can never pull it off. If I ever get rid of my beard, I may do that. Late, if you do that, you have your own very your own vintage break show. You heard it here first. <laughs> Come on, Late. Okay. Grow sides like that. That we'd like to see that. That's that's fantastic. Do it as a fundraiser. I like that, Lou. That's a good idea. Here's a, here's decent. Here's a good one. Not not that great, but Bob Lanier. Oh, yep. Bob Lanier is definitely a Hall of Famer. That's a good one. Going on a nice run here. Dougie, what'd you find out about Walter Davis? Was I wrong? Ted says he's a Turkish Hall of Famer. <laughs> yeah, it's Turkish, Polish. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, oh, no, here we go. Got to flip this one around. Lionel Hollins. Okay. Not a Hall of Famer. Decent bet, though, Lou. His rookies in 78, Walter Davis. He was a good player. I'm looking up his stats. Mm -hmm. He must have offended someone because for not making the Hall of Fame in the NBA to score 20 a game. 
Yeah. He's the player that Michael Jordan looked up to. <laughs> really? Yeah. All right, Sonics. <laughs> Anthony says he's waiting for Tupperware to launch a, a card protector series. I love that. Someone's <laughs> got to get in touch with Tupperware. We do. I'm going to have Monty do this on Twitter. <laughs> That's a great idea. Uh, That's them. That's 13. Decent ones in there. I was say, so let's review if we can, Jill. Let's pretend this is our little half. mini break. How many Hall of Famers do we think we have in there? We have at least well, several. Let's take a look. Well, that's not. Let's see. Okay. He didn't no. make it. No. Well, we got 1.5, 2.5 Hall of Famers somewhere. Lanier. Lanier, yep. Yeah. Gilmore and his chops is kind of yeah. like one and a half. That's one and a half. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Walter Davis, very good. Um, and by the way, fun fun uh, stat from Dougie. So apparently, uh, according to Dougie, he said that Walter Davis was the player that Michael Jordan looked up to at North Carolina. Oh. It's kind of cool. Yeah. He was a good ball player, Walter Davis. Sean Dooley says he had his jersey retired in his high school, so that's that's something. That's something. Yep. Who Michael knows? Thompson was a good ball player. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh no. That's it. Uh, here we. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yep, we got it. <laughs> right down the Hall of Famer. Uh, yeah, Michael Ray Richardson. Nope, but I know we have a Nate Archibald coming oh, up. He's he was on famer. Seinfeld, right? Yeah, <laughs> Michael Ray Richardson. <laughs> Uh, Kevin Porter. Okay, not a Hall of Famer. No. Um, Foots. Footsie. Foots. Yep. Foots Walker. Calvin. Clarence. That one's classic. Yeah. Hall Nate of Famer. Archibald. Archibald. Yep. Um, Darwin Cook. Not a Hall of Famer. And Randy Smith. Very cool. So you got several Hall of Famers. We didn't get a Magic or a Bird. I got a feeling, Joe, this is not going to be the last time you're going to be joining us. Um, <laughs> I hope you had fun today because we had a blast yeah. having on our show. I appreciate it. I really do. This is awesome. And thank you so much for this. It was a really cool experience and really cool sets of cards. Thank you so much. Oh, listen, it's our pleasure, Joe. You know, what I'm thinking is maybe the next time that we have you on, what we'd like to do is kind of continue this tradition of at least once a month you know, not so much in a formal way, just to be able to give back to the military community. I've been trying to get on my brother-in-law to get him on here. I'd love if I could have you and Tim on the next time that we, you know, kind of have a, if you will, give back to the military, um, you know, on our vintage breaks uh, at Leighton's Loft Show. It was really an honor to have you on today, Joe. I don't know. I think we should try a Navy guy next time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm signing off. That's great. <laughs> Peace and love. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much. Yo, thank you so much for being on today. Shout out to your lovely wife who kind of made all this happen behind the scenes and was diligent, stayed up on me. Um, and we're looking to have, uh, we're looking forward to having you on uh, again, hopefully real soon. Yeah, she's awesome. She made this happen. It's the greatest thing. She's great. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Be well. You too. Take Talk to you soon. All right. That was excellent. that was great. That was a blast. Joe's got to come back. Absolutely. Um, so we got a few minutes left in today's show. Um, just a few minutes left for the cutoff for today's giveaway. Fifty dollar break credit in seven spots. Or excuse me, six spots in the um, seventy three baseball set break. Uh, shout out to Jason again and his father uh, who um, gave uh, just collected myself the opportunity to purchase the nineteen eighty six Fleer basketball Tupperware collection, uh, which we will be re reaching out to Tupperware and their people shortly after today's show. Yep. Um, got to figure there's something there, Lou. That's got to be, right? I mean, the story behind this, they, they got to love that story. Absolutely. And the fact, I mean, basically, uh, and it's funny because I don't know how Tupperware will feel about it, but, you know, Jason wouldn't ship the cards. I made a joke like, oh, they were stored so nicely in the Tupperware for so long, like shipping the Tupperware. You know, I'm sure Tupperware would have, you know, liked that as part of the story, but, you know, we couldn't get them to quite do that. Um, well, they wanted to keep it probably. Yeah, that's, that's what I think as well. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, I wanted to select the kid's winner for the Hank Aaron, if we could do that now. Um, it is our honor to be giving this away to uh, one lucky duckling out there. What's up, Andy? And are we going to do this in true VB style uh, through a random? Yes. Love it. You need me to uh, queue up the dice? Uh, yeah, let me turn this on. Next week, Lou, that's right. We'll be talking about baseball in some capacity. Yes. We'll have Excited. some actual real stats to go through. Mm -hmm. And on the 21st, I think it is, Dave Parker. It's, it's going to be fantastic. Back. Yep. I was hoping uh, we, we can correspond before that, and maybe we can send Mr. Parker a few of his rookies to sign and maybe give it out to our audience. 
Oh, I'll pass that along. We'll see if we can make that connection. His book comes out tomorrow, actually. His new book comes out tomorrow. Very cool. Yeah, we'd like to have his book on so we can give that away as well. I'm happy to buy some uh, to do that. It'd be great. Uh, Lou, you want to share your screen so we can see the dice roll? Oh, you want everything. All right. We're going to randomize it the hard way six times. Now you're going to show them the... Uh... Good luck, kids. Uh, okay, Lou, you want to switch over? What am I switching to? The kids? Oh, I'll back to this. Right, we there we go. One, two, three. Good luck to each and every one of you on this list. Five. Now, slow roll for a second here, J5. All right. <laughs> you know, you're just cutting right through. You're taking away all the drama. Don't uh, talk good luck, to kids. Good luck to Carlo, to Jack, to Shay. I couldn't say any of their names. He was moving it too fast. <laughs> I couldn't read. Uh, Wesley and Jane, Victor, Caius, Leonora, Lucy, Henry, Zoe, Mia Braxton, Adeline, Jay, Cole, Luca, Brooklyn, a very cool name. That's also where I was born. Caleb, Emery, and Haven, Kashrin, Maddie, Kieran, Chris, Layla, Addison, and Emma. I thought at the very least it'd be cool to hear your name. Shout it out here on the Vintage Breaks slash um, Layton's Loft weekly podcast. And without further ado, J5, who is taking home this Hank Aaron? All right. And just to remind everybody, it was one child per family, per household. Yeah. All right, here we go. Lucy and Rory Green. Mike Green! Mike Green. Yeah! Congratulations. Who? I'm sorry, who is the parents? Mike Green. Mike Green. Very cool. Right, right, right. So, uh, let me just there's Daisy Winners right there. Very cool. Uh, Do we have a picture of Lucy and Rory by any chance? There's Lucy and Rory right there. Yeah, right there. Oh, my goodness. That is adorable. Congratulations to Lucy and Rory. We'd love to know. Are you going to keep it? It's okay if you sell it. Um, <laughs> we'd love to know what you buy. My guess is it probably not going to be more baseball cards if I had a feeling. It might be toys, but we'd love to know anyway. Um, what you do on your journey with this Hank Aaron second year. That is adorable. That's if their dad tells them they actually want it. <laughs> Could be an yeah, issue. I was going to say, like, listen, we need some sort of proof of life here. Could We're going to need you to show the exchange of, like, the handoff, <laughs> not of, like, the listing on eBay. We have the serial <laughs> number right here, folks. Or where is it? Right there. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> that was great. I don't think Mike is on. Is it? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know. Oh, okay. We're, we're trying to Mike Green. Great. Well, we're reaching out to Mike and his family right now. <laughs> I mean, call him. Uh, Should we call him? I, I have his number right here. Uh, yeah, let's just call him. Whatever you guys think. I'll, I'll call him. Absolutely. Uh, let's see if he's available. Uh, Ted says check on eBay in a week. <laughs> we have to keep track. The Ventures Break community is going to have to keep track of that card. I think so. Oh, that's great. By the way, how cool is this? Shout out to Sir Charles. He is looking at a collection for us out in Arizona. Oh, nice. So Just Collect is expanding its tentacles. It's reach. Would this be his first buy, his first collection buy? If it works out, yeah. It's it's like This is not a slouch of a collection. This is a big deal. Yeah. So no pressure, Charles. If you need somebody to drive him, I'm big into cross country drives, so I'll, I'll I'll fly out and drive him back. Lou, I just want you to know that's on record. Like, <laughs> there's a legit chance in the next twelve months we may need you to do several cross country runs. I kind of like doing that. Yeah. Uh, really? Oh yeah, I like taking a little trip and doing a little road trip. We got, we got some breaking. We got some breaking news for you. All right, we got some news. We have apparently Mike is on the phone. Okay. Hey, Mike. Hey, so I'm gonna give him my phone number. I'm not sure, but I think so, Lou. Yeah, we had a couple. I gave him a couple of ways to go about it. He could come on Streamyard. He could. I uh, gave him the phone number here in the studio. So this is adorable. Okay. Yep. Kidding me? If I was that age and I won this, I'd like be jumping all over the place. Okay, hold on. Okay, so Mike Green is on the phone. He's on his way to get his COVID shot. Oh, what's up, Mike? How are you? Hey, what's going on, Lighten? Not too much. Congratulations to your lovely daughters on their big victory. They won the 1955 Tops Hank Aaron SGC 4.5 in the uh, exclusive Vintage Breaks Kids giveaway that we just uh, drew the winner for. Oh, that's awesome. Lucy's going to be so excited. <laughs> She's my uh, my little collector buddy now. 
Very cool. So what we said on air was, you know, based on the, the looks and the age, they look adorable. I don't know if they're going to keep Mr. Aaron or not. So we're not offended if they sell him. We'd love to know if they buy toys or if they buy more cards or, for that matter, if they keep them, that's okay, too. We'd love to know what they decide to do. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely let you guys know. I'm pushing for them to keep it, though, because I'd like to have that in the family collection. Hey, listen, I'm pushing for them to keep it as well, but I realize that, you know, I'm not blood yet. So, you know. Well, yeah, exactly. but I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll have to push the dad voice a little bit and get a little stern with them to make sure, you know, you know we have to keep that. You could, you know, you could go one step further. You could say, "Listen, you know, honey, if, if we don't keep it, like Layton's not going to let me be in breaks anymore, and that's a big problem for Daddy." <laughs> yeah, she'll probably laugh it off, but we'll go with it. Very cool. Well, congratulations to you and your daughters and your family. Uh, this is what it's all about, Mike, is making some memories and collecting. And uh, we certainly made one today, so really appreciate your support of our community. And uh, you know, big shout out to your daughters for their, um, you know, really cool victory. Yeah, this is awesome. I can't wait to share the news with them. Thank you guys so much. It's our pleasure. Hey, Mike. Take care, man. Take care, Mike. Bye. All right. Take it easy, Mike. Love this. So this this really turned out, Tai Lu, without having on a Dave Parker or a famous book writer today. Oh, no, we had a blast. This, this <laughs> might have been one of our best shows we've ever had. Special shout out to uh, to Joe Cobez and his family for letting uh, you know Joe, of course, uh, serve our country proudly and uh, join our show today it was awesome. Um, giving this away to a couple adorable kids and having Mike on to accept it for them uh, was a lot of fun. And, you know, we'll have some time, I'm sure, in the next few days. I might hop on uh, Discord either tonight or tomorrow with Charles or Chris uh, to talk more about PSA and such. Great episode of The Loft. We're going to give away the seven prizes live on our Vintage Break stream, which is coming up now. So if you want to know if you won, stay tuned. Lou, as always, a great show. Had a blast. Thank you so much. That was so much fun tonight. Thanks for tuning in today, everybody.